All right. SharePoint site. All right, so what we've got here is a very vanilla um, SharePoint site. It's uh, the BI Center template, which has quite a lot of the stuff all set up for you already. Now, if any of you have used this BI Center template before, you'll know that the first way that you can open up Dashboard Designer is by using this uh, Create Dashboards and saying Start using Performance Point Services, and there's a button over there. Now that, that's really for somebody who's learning performance points for the first time, you haven't created any other content, there's another way to open it up and uh, we'll show you that in just a moment. Now the other thing about performance points is that all the content that you create inside performance point is actually stored inside SharePoint. If we have a look over here, there's a couple of different libraries that SharePoint's created for us out of the box. Now I'm going to start at the top and the first one, dashboards, is where you're actually deploying your finished dashboards to. So it's an actual SharePoint page that you're deploying. We're going to use this one in its current format as it is, um, so we're not going to change that at all. Second one then is data connections. So data connections is where you actually store a connection to your data source. Once again, we're going to use it as is, um, and we're not going to change anything. Libraries just takes you to list libraries. We'll skip on past that. Final one is performance point content. Now, performance point content is the place where all the little bits and pieces that you're developing um, actually sits inside SharePoint. <laughs> the default library is performance point content, and that's great if you're looking at the technology for the first time, but you'll soon realize that if you put all the content that you're creating inside that one library, it's going to become enormously hard to try and find things. So what I always do is I say, look, don't even touch that performance point content library. You know, go ahead and, and uh, ignore it completely and actually create your own performance point content libraries that are very closely aligned to what you're building inside them. The way you do that, you go Start Actions, and we've got this uh, More Options button over here. Okay, and this brings up a uh, Silverlight control. If you don't have Silverlight installed, you'll get a much blander type of interface, but you've got the same functionality. Now, what I said is we want to create a performance point content list. So if we go to list over here, set performance point content list, and really I'm going to call this the uh, August 25 webinar because that's uh, really the intent of what this is going to be. Now, that, that's a trick that you want to use is name these libraries after what you're actually going to put in them. And I'm going to hit OK, create. Right. Now, Obviously, we've created this place. Uh, getting some feedback that the voice is cutting. Uh, Rachel, how, how's my voice reception over there? Rachel, guys? Oh, yeah. yep. uh, I'm, saying it's no, fine. the voice is fine. Audio is fine. I'm not having any problems. Oh, yeah. I had two people pop in a voice is cutting. Okay, cool. It's real good. Um, so anyway, you're, you're creating these performance point content libraries. You're putting your uh, contents inside them, and you're closely aligning them to a particular dashboard or a couple of dashboards. Now, what we want to do is we want to get into the dashboard designer. So we hit items, go new item, and we've got a list of what all the different items are. Now, I'm actually going to open us up into uh, dashboard designer real quick, and then we'll talk to you what those different terms are. So there we go, it's opened up Dashboard Designer and it's asking us to create a dashboard and a certain template. And in performance point terms, a dashboard is really a collection of web pages that sit in SharePoint that are made up of multiple components. And the dashboard itself um, has multiple zones and multiple pages and you put all the content that you're working with together inside that dashboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, use the default header two columns. And then I'm going to talk you through the uh, environments a little bit. So we've got really four areas inside Dashboard Designer. We've got the ribbon up top, and there's quite a lot of stuff you can do inside the ribbon. Um, on the left, we have a list of all the things that we've brought into our workspace, i.e. anything that we're actually working on at, that's come down to our computer or SharePoint is in the workspace on the left. You choose what you're working on by going on the left. Little piece is what we call the design surface. And this will change depending on what object you're working on. 
uh, it'll look different for a dashboard from a, than from a scorecard and that kind of thing. Um, and then right on the right hand side, we've uh, got all the things that we can add to the thing we're working on. Now, of course, we haven't built anything just yet, so there's nothing there. I'm just going to give this dashboard a name. I'm going to call it August. And I'm going to change that page name to the first page. Not very descriptive, but uh, you change this to be whatever you're trying to demo off. All right, so there we have a dashboard. That's great. What do we need to do? We need to bring some data into our dashboard. And we need to do that firstly by creating a data connection. The data connection stores all the information about connecting to um, your cube or your table. Now we've got various things that we can pull data from. This demo we're going to stick to analysis services. Uh, a lot of the stuff for Excel services and SharePoint lists and SQL tables is very similar to what we're going to show you with AS, but it's not quite as rich. AS always gives you the best experience. So, the first thing is you need to put in your server name. Uh, I need to spot right. Okay, and that's uh, my server. You need to choose a database, and I'm going to demo off AdventureWorks. And you need to choose a cube. Pretty simple. At this point, I always have test data source, but th there is one little trick over here. If you are using Kerberos and you're using delegation, you need to make sure that you tick the per user identity. Um, I'm going to use the unattended service account. Test data source and it succeeded. Great, we've created our data source that connects through to the database. There's one more thing that we need to do when we're setting up this data uh, source. Let's actually map our time dimension. This gives uh, performance point the ability to do some really cool calculations using the time dimension. So I can say, what is the relative date? So take today's date and give me all the days in the year and that kind of thing. So what we do is we hop on over to time. And we choose our dimension. Right. In this case, it's date dot date dot calendar. Then we need to choose a date to begin the year. Now, just be really careful with this. If you choose the wrong date, say say you choose the first of June, and you map the first of June to the first of June, it's going to look like it's working most of the time, but it actually maps which day your year begins on. So, if your financial year begins in March, you just choose March. Now, this is. Uh, Adventure works, of course, so it doesn't actually have data for the current date. So I'm going to choose Jan 1, 2008. I'm going to say day. I'm going to do something a little bit funny over here, and this is a thing that's specific to Adventure Works. I'm actually going to map 1st of Jan 2011 to the 1st of Jan 2008. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is because we don't have any data in Adventure Works to 2011. And then I'm going to finish off by mapping these uh, time aggregations. And this piece is necessary so that Performance Point knows how to construct the queries when you're using time intelligence.